Welcome back to Hardware Unboxed. It's time for another monitor review, and today we have the first of MSI's new Prestige range, which is designed for creators and other professionals. We've already seen what MSI is capable of in the gaming market, and generally I've been pretty impressed, but the shift up to professional products is another step up in difficulty, and it can be hard to get right on the first attempt. Also, as you might have noticed, not wearing a shirt for this video. That's because we have launched our merch store where you can buy stuff like this hoodie that I'm wearing right now. Do check that out. Links in the description. It's a great way to support the channel and all the work that we do. But now back to the monitor review. The monitor in question is the MSI Prestige PS341WU, which is essentially MSI's version of LG's 34WK95U that we looked at a few months back. It's a 34 inch ultra wide monitor packing a monster 5120 by 2160 resolution. So 219 ultra wide with a 4K class resolution. It uses IPS technology, packs five millisecond response times, has no curve, which is a bit unusual for ultra wides and supports HDR with display HDR 600 certification. Because we're talking about a 4K class ultra wide rather than the standard 1440p class models that we've had for a while, the refresh rate is capped to just 60 Hertz. So this isn't designed designed for gamers. Having the fluidity of a high refresh rate is also nice for productivity apps too, but it isn't really a key feature. To compound this further, the PS341WU does not include adaptive sync support, which again would be a loss for a gaming product, but doesn't really concern me with this sort of display. The price is also crucial to this equation. MSI are using the same panel as the LG 34WK95U, but coming in $200 cheaper at $1,300 US versus $1,500 for LG's product. But as a teaser for what is to come, that's looking purely at MSRPs, the value position does change a little when looking at current pricing. Design-wise, MSI has done a decent job here for their first professional display. There's nothing crazy going on here. The front is dominated by the 34-inch ultra-wide panel with slim bezels on all sides, and there's a hint of the white rear peeking out around the edges. The stand uses this unique square design, which I quite like, and there's a few copper gold highlights around the place. The rear is standard white plastic, but it looks good and there's no glossy area, so there isn't a huge fingerprint or dust risk here. It's a neat and simple design that wouldn't look out of place in a work environment. It's also well constructed with tight seams and a sturdy stand, which still supports height, tilt and swivel adjustment. I'd perhaps like a bit more height available, but that's a personal preference thing. Decent set of inputs, one display port, two HDMI, USB-C, audio jacks and a USB hub that includes ports on the left side as well as an SD card reader. Pretty neat to include an SD reader here given how widespread they are in the photo and video industry and it's easily accessible on that left side. The on-screen display is controlled through a directional toggle and alongside this you'll see a quick action button that can be programmed to perform something in a single press, a bit like a macro. For example, this could switch between two monitor profiles if you set it up that way. The OSD can also be controlled through MSI's Creator OSD app, provided the monitor is hooked up over USB. I'll talk a bit more specifically about some of the calibration features in here when I go over color performance, but as you'd expect, color controls do occupy most of the OSD here. There are several color modes, including calibrated profiles for sRGB, DCI-P3, Adobe RGB, and so on. There's also picture-in-picture -picture functionality and some neat screen assistance modes, including green and rulers which might be handy depending on the task you're performing. Time to talk about color performance because this is obviously a big area of interest for a creator focused product. MSI is using LG's nano IPS panel here so we're getting an advertised 98% DCI-P3 coverage making this an excellent wide gamut monitor. In my testing I achieved 97% coverage a little higher than LG's own model but basically equivalent in what is a great result for an IPS monitor. Out of the box, the default mode keeps the gamut unclamped, which is standard behavior. Grayscale performance is great with near perfect adherence to the sRGB gamma curve, a delta E average below 2.0, and a reasonably flat CCT curve, which delivers an average of 6568K. There's no noticeable tint to whites either, so out of the box, you can count on grays looking fantastic. Of course, if we go through and look at saturation and color checker results for the default mode against sRGB, it's not gonna be a good showing because of the unclamped gamut. Delta E averages between 3.0 and 4.0 are pretty typical when this happens, but there is a dedicated sRGB mode, so let's look at that. Hmm, yeah, not a great result. The sRGB mode, for some bizarre reason, 
uses a different white point to the default mode which introduces a noticeable yellow tint. I have no idea why this is the case. sRGB uses the D65 white point or 6500K which is exactly what we get with the standard mode, but switch it to the sRGB mode and suddenly we're down near 6000K with no ability to change the color temperature. Sure, gamma performance is spot on, but the grayscale delta E average actually gets worse. Now we're at 2.78 rather than below 2.0 like we were previously. And yes, the sRGB mode does clamp the gamut to sRGB, but the incorrect white point means the entire chromacity range is translated, leading to a delta E average of 2.59 for both saturation and color checker. This is meant to be an out of the box mode that's suitable for color accurate sRGB work, but it fails in that department with these results. For wide gamut work, things get a bit interesting, so this will require at least a little bit of explanation. There are two common ways to approach wide gamut. The usual way for PC monitors is D65P3, which Apple has also called Display P3. You can think of this as an extension to sRGB. It uses the same white point, D65, and gamma curve, the sRGB gamma curve, but with a 25% larger gamut, so we get more colors. The other way is DCI-P3, which is more of a film cinema standard. It uses the P3 color space like D65-P3, so the same 25% larger than sRGB gamut, but it changes the gamma curve to 2.6 and uses a 6300K white point for whatever reason. Someone decided that, I guess. Sometimes when talking about PC monitors, people use DCI-P3 to mean D65-P3, and I've certainly made that mistake in the past, but technically the two are different. To me, D65P3 is the one that makes the most sense for computer displays, but of course, if you're working in the cinema industry and you're targeting DCI-P3 for a cinema projector, for example, then you will need actual DCI-P3. Adobe RGB is another way to handle wide gamuts, although it's not something I generally talk about to keep these reviews shorter and simpler. The reason I bring this up is because the default mode actually does a decent job of handling D65P3. I wouldn't say it's perfect with a saturation delta E average of 2.27 for just shy of the sub 2.0 accuracy rating I like to see. Achieving sub 2.0 delta E's means the monitor is basically indistinguishable from accurate. The PS341WU gets close, but not quite close enough. With that said, grayscale performance is the same as the default mode looking at sRGB, so in other words it's great, and I think D65P3 is a really suitable wide gamut, you know, color gamut for creators to be using. In fact, my testing here shows the monitor to perform a little better than MSI's included calibration report. Their report suggests they targeted a delta E average below 3.0 for P3, and for this unit I achieved an actual result of 2.52. They also saw a CCT curve just below 6500K, and P3 coverage of 98%. So not far off, it's a pretty good showing so far. The DCI-P3 mode targets actual DCI-P3, not D65-P3. Again, we're seeing the same issues as with the sRGB mode. The PS341WU nails the correct 2.6 gamma curve, but doesn't quite hit 6300K, and with its wonky CCT average, that leads to an incorrect delta E average of 2.81. Color performance as a result falls between 2.0 and 3.0. I feel that if the white point was nailed, this would be a bit better, but at least in this state, I wouldn't say the mode is accurate or suitable for DCI-P3 work. As is typical for these modes, there is no way to adjust the color temperature when you select sRGB or DCI-P3 modes. This would have been a great way to fix some of the issues with factory performance, but alas, it is locked out. Locking it out makes sense if you nail the factory calibration, but you have to be sure you're nailing it and MSI doesn't seem to have done that here. Now, it'd be great if these factory modes worked perfectly. It's something I'd really expect from a top tier monitor, but sometimes this goes wrong. Luckily, professional monitors like this often include many ways to calibrate the screen yourself. And that's something I think most buyers interested in color accuracy will be doing. But here's where the PS341WU really starts to fall apart. There are three calibration profile slots available in the monitor's OSD, but as of right now, there is no way to use them. There is no function built into the monitor or the Creator OSD app at this stage that allows you to generate a calibration profile and upload it into the provided slots. MSI tells me this feature is currently in development and will be available around the end of 2019. Now this really isn't good enough to be honest. MSI will be putting this monitor on store shelves shortly and one of the key features for professional users is not available at launch and maybe months away. The competing LG option, the 34WK95U, 
already includes this functionality in a working state, but MSI is saying their version is not ready. Again, this is such a key feature for professional buyers, I'm quite bewildered that it wasn't developed in time for launch. Having hardware calibration profiles is great because you don't have to mess around with often incompatible or ignored software ICC profiles in your operating system. But never fear, I guess we can still go down the software calibration route to see how the PS341WU performs. Unfortunately, there are more issues here. Standard practice when calibrating is to first use the monitor's on-screen controls to try and make everything as accurate as possible before you generate the ICC profile. So this means you know, adjusting your contrast, saturation, gamma, and color temperature to get them as close to accurate as we can. But one of the fundamental controls, color temperature, doesn't work properly. For my unit, this isn't a massive issue because out of the box it's pretty close to 6500K, but say your unit has a bit of a red tint out of the box. Well, the color temperature sliders don't actually move the white point and thus adjust the grayscale performance like with basically every other monitor ever made. Instead, they seem to do some weird quasi-saturation adjustments. You can see the red points being shifted in these graphs, but it doesn't make a lot of sense to me. This should be translating the white point, and that will of course shift all the other points as a result, but that's not what is going on with this monitor for whatever reason. Not being able to adjust the color temperature isn't a deal breaker for calibration. I was still able to create a very accurate ICC profile. It just means the ICC profile is doing most of the heavy lifting and we want as much of the calibration to reside in hardware as possible. The issues I faced here are simply not up to standard for a professional monitor. You're paying a decent amount of coin for this display. These basic features that help deliver an accurate experience should work, especially considering the target market for this monitor are people that will want accuracy. That is a lot of discussion on color performance, so let's quickly move through the rest. Brightness in the SDR mode is good at over 400 nits peak, as is the contrast ratio of over 1200 to 1. Excellent for an IPS panel and in the same ballpark as LG's model. Viewing angles are superb as well as you would expect. Uniformity is disappointing, it's not terrible, but edge performance is not good and the central zone has many areas with a delta E above 2.0 relative to the center. I'd expect better from a professional grade display and indeed the LG 34WK95U delivers much better results. Response times are slow with the optimal fast mode delivering a 10.03 millisecond greater grey average while error rates are low at just 1% on average and none above 15%. If we move to the fastest mode in search of faster response times, overshoot becomes a significant issue. In contrast, the LG 34WK95U is around 1.5 milliseconds faster on average, and while error rates are a little higher, it's not enough to become an issue. So it's safe to say the MSI model has worse greater grade performance, although neither of these displays have fantastic response time performance. Input lag is also mediocre, again, a little slower than the LG option but most 60Hz displays are inherently slow as they cannot refresh quick enough to get inputs on the screen as fast as higher refresh options. For power consumption, we're looking at around 50 watts for a 200 nit white image, which impressively is around 5 watts lower than the LG model when calibrated. HDR is also a feature of this monitor with Display HDR 600 certification. Looking down the checklist like the LG 34WK95U, I'd classify this as a semi-HDR capable monitor. It nails the brightness and color requirements of HDR, but while it does have local dimming support, its inclusion of just 12 edge lit zones rather than a full array backlight means that it cannot truly deliver the contrast requirements of HDR, but despite this, it should provide somewhat of an upgrade over SDR in some situations, hence semi-HDR. If we look at our HDR brightness graph, you can see that sustained, there isn't much change depending on the window size. The monitor consistently does a little over 420 nits. Where we hit the required brightness targets is with its flash performance, which reaches just over 600 nits from a full screen white flash. For contrast, yeah, performance is okay with flash versus black contrast at just shy of 50,000 to 1 and surprisingly with lower black levels than the 34WK95U, which means it will have a higher contrast ratio. But this begins to fall away, especially with our within screen or single frame contrast tests. 10,000 to 1 here in a best case is better than non-HDR displays, but falls short of the industry recommended 50,000 to 1. And then with our worst case display test, which punishes edge lit displays, we're basically falling back to the panel's native contrast. Overall, the MSI Prestige PS341WU is a strange product. MSI set about creating their first professional grade creator focused monitor, which is a big and difficult task for a relatively new player in the monitor market. 
but the results, in my opinion, is a fail. Most of the key things I look for in this type of monitor have not been delivered. Hardware calibration support is built in, but not functional yet. White point adjustments flat out are broken. Outside of the default mode, the factory calibrated profiles are mediocre, and uniformity is not up to a professional grade. For the target market, I just can't recommend this display. However, there are elements here that aren't all that bad. The Nano IPS panel has a fantastic resolution and excellent wide gamut coverage with elite viewing angles and better than average contrast for an IPS display. The design is quite nice and there are some handy OSD features. In its current form, I think the PS341WU would be best suited as a high resolution ultra wide for office users. If you don't necessarily need color accurate performance, but you do want to you know, edit documents or web pages or even spreadsheets on a 5120 by 2160 display, then this type of display is going to be great for that. But for this monitor to really attract office users, it would have to be priced a lot lower than US$1,300, US given you can buy two decent 4K displays for less than $1,000 combined these days. Around $600 to $700 I think would be a great price for that use case. The problem of course is MSI aren't targeting office users, they're after the professional creator market. They design features and set a price for those users. To make matters worse, the LG 34WK95U, which is overall a superior display, is available these days for as low as $950, and its similar brother, the 34BK950U, is also on sale for $1,150. With the Prestige PS341WU priced at $1,300, I just don't see why anyone would pay more for a worse product regardless of the use case. So I think this first creator monitor will be a bit of a learning experience for MSI and I hope they can take the feedback here and put that towards improving their future lineup. I like what they do for gaming displays, they just need to look more closely at the professional market to see what standards are required. I'm sure they'll get it right down the track, they will be able to do something nice here in this market I'm sure. That's it for this review, as always please subscribe for more monitor coverage and consider supporting us on Patreon, we really appreciate all the support. Another great way to support the channel directly is to grab some of our merch, links in the description below to get something like this hoodie that I'm wearing right now, and I'll catch you in the next one.